<laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Babe, that didn't sound too enthusiastic. Good morning, everyone. This is Elder Johnson. Come on, babe. This is Maddie Fresh Frederick Johnson. <laughs> you see, she's trying to keep that uh, maiden name. Uh, but nevertheless, we just wanted to just come on uh, as usual. But not with the same old word. We just want to just be an encouragement to somebody uh, because we can't just assume that uh, everybody has a place to get a good word or something encouraging uh, for the people of God. Turn it down, please. Uh, so we just want to really, uh, we're just going to kind of flow like whatever like really hits us. But I do have a start in scripture as I always like to do. And as mentioned, like we don't just come on here just to talk like, but we really... Uh, you know, purpose in our hearts just to, you know, encourage the people of God. And a lot of times, um, you know, when that's when that's our heart posture and God sees that, you know, the areas that we may need encouragement in ourselves, God would always allow that to happen. So always remember, like, you know, the Bible is true when it says you reap what you sow. Uh, so so we believe that if we sow encouragement, uh, that we will always be able to reap encouragement. So that's why we do that, uh, you know. And, and and just something that God just placed in our spirit. Babe, did you want to mention anything before I get into the scripture? Yeah, go ahead. All right, so we, we, we're going to get into the scripture uh, because this is a, a time where uh, relationships are being tested. This is a time where uh, the, our, our love walk, as I say, is being tested. Uh, why? Why? Because, you know, we're spending more time with our family, friends and loved ones. A lot of us are. And then, as I mentioned last week, a lot of us uh, are spending a lot of time, a lot of time with ourselves. And we're not used to doing that. We're not used, used to spending as much time as we think with other other people outside of our coworkers, I would say. But so much in the home. But here's the thing. There's a selfish spirit that has, you know, risen over everybody's life. And here's the thing. Uh, I, we don't have any room to be selfish. We don't have any room like to, for it to just be me, my four and no more, as they say, like for you to only be concerned about your well-being, to be only concerned about your family's well-being. Uh, it's time like one of my prayers is that uh, our society is restored back to a community based society, because even when I was coming up and this is going to tie into the scripture, I'm going to give you in a moment. Uh, but it's time that we get back to a community, a society that's really concerned about the next person. Now, this ain't a word that's going to, you know, get you excited, but it's going to challenge you and it's going to encourage you because we'll find people going through their distress, their pain, their sorrow, their frustrations of life more easy with a healthy support system. Uh, now, we can always uh, expect somebody's healthy support system feel that it should come from their family only their friends or loved ones, because even if I don't know you, because I'm a part of the body of Christ and I have the spirit of God living on the inside of me, mm -hmm. I should be able to step in and be a support system to you, to be an encouragement to you. So even you and I challenge you, stop only being there for folks that you love or that you know. You, you know you're required if you're part of the body of Christ and just having that the love of Christ in you, just being part of the kingdom, even if you don't know a person, mm -hmm. even if you don't know a group of people, but you see them and you see somebody that needs encouragement, even if it's someone at your job that you're not familiar with, that you've never spoken to, you know, the word that God placed inside of you, the encouragement that he gives you to give out to others is not just for your mother, your grandmother, your That's aunts, right. your uncles, your children, your pastor, your ministry peers. But you're always supposed to have a word of encouragement to anybody that's in need. And this is where the challenge comes in, people of God, for us to step outside of our social norms. Mm -hmm. Because as long as we refuse to step outside of our social norms, we're going to have people suffering unnecessarily. Why? Because I'm scared to give this person a word because I don't know that person. But yeah. you know God is putting something in your spirit that, hey, something is wrong with this person. Give them this word. The Bible talks about having the tongue of the learned that we may speak a word in season to a soul that's weary. Mm -hmm. Even if you're in line at McDonald's, it have been plenty of times. Obviously, you, you're probably not going to know the 
the person that's standing in front of you or behind you at McDonald's. But if you know, and sometimes a lot of us, if we remain sensitive and get outside of ourselves and stop this selfish mindset and this selfish spirit that we have, we can begin to feel the woes, the sorrows, and what other people are going through. Why? Because God will reveal it. It's called discerning. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's called discerning. So you may discern something while you're just trying to get a burger in line or you're just trying to get something to drink or a uh, or frat pay from McDonald's or something like that. But God may drop in your spirit. You may discern that this person behind you is going through some type of distress. They need some type of encouragement. And guess what? How dare you? A lot of times, if we be honest, all of us have missed those opportunities because we, we look at folks' face like, oh, I'm not about to speak to them. They look mean. But you know what God is speaking to you to tell them. You know he's giving you an encouraging word. You know what you're feeling. You know what you're picking up. How dare we pass up on those opportunities? And truth be told, a lot of folks' lives, uh, you know, maybe not in a literal sense, or it could be in a literal sense, and then somewhat in a figurative sense, have been lost because we refuse to just open up and be a community, to show concern for somebody other than ourselves and our family, friends, and loved ones. If we just open our mouths and be obedient to God, we could save a life. We can maybe stop that person that's about to drink that frappe behind you and go jump off a bridge. And you know what you are feeling, but you refuse to speak that word of encouragement. You refuse to step in and intervene with a smile and open up the conversation with a warm greeting. All because you're, it, it, it's outside of your norm. But God is calling us to get outside of our norm because lives will be lost as long as we're trying to stay inside of our norm. And check this out. You may say, well, I'm an introvert. It doesn't excuse you from being a source of encouragement to anybody just because you're an introvert. Mm -hmm. God never let you off the hook and say, because you're an introvert and you're not a social butterfly, you don't have to encourage folks when I bring it to you. You don't have to do what I'm telling you to do. He never said that. And think about this. A lot of us that feel this way and we pass those opportunities up because it's out of our norm. We feel the weight when we're going through stuff and we say, man, I just seem like the folks around me don't can't feel me or pick up what I'm going through. Uh, it feels like, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, strange. I, I want somebody to just come speak a word of encouragement to me. I want somebody to just come tell me God is working it out. Be encouraged. Things are OK. We be desiring that when we going through things. Mm -hmm. So do you think when we're in a healthy and whole position that somebody else it's not looking for us to intervene, but because it's not your mama, or your grandmama or your cousins or your aunt, your uncles, your best friend. You don't know this person. They look mean. So you refuse to give them a word that can possibly save their life. Check this out, people of God. First John 4, 7 House of Love Ministries is built on a firm foundation. And that firm foundation is love because without love, you can't preach nothing else in the kingdom. If you're not leading with love, with your actions and your words. You cannot preach or do anything for God in the kingdom. Hear me. If it's not being led and fueled by love. First John 4, 7 says this. And then I'm going to let my wife get some of this action. <laughs> she ready. But first John 4, 7. It says, be loved. Let us love one another. For love, love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. I'm going to read that one more time. First John 4, 7. Be loved. Let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. You can't say that you're walking in love, but then yet you pass up these opportunities that you know God is leading you to encourage folks. A lot of times, and, and then the other side of this too, and I do want to bring this up, I, I've seen where a lot of people are scared, babe, to encourage the people around them, but they'll go and encourage a stranger in the minute. You see what I'm saying? You can't be that way as well because I do know some people. You need to be ready to encourage whoever needs it when you feel God is leading you to do so. And I always say charity begins at home and then it's spread abroad. So don't ignore encouraging your mama or your sister just because you're so common with them or your uncle or your granddaddy or somebody because you're so common with them. Mm -hmm. But then you will go give a word and season to a stranger on the street. That's just like a lot of us. We'll evangelize mm -hmm. on the street, but we won't witness to our own uncle. We won't encourage our own aunt. We won't speak life into our own sisters and brothers, but we'll give it to our co-workers. That's true. And that's the challenge, people, to be balanced. 
Number one, to make sure you're not skipping over home and then trying to make an impact everywhere else. And then number two, make sure you're not selfish and only concerned about home that you're missing out on encouraging and building up the people that you don't know that's out here in public. Go ahead, babe. Um, the scripture I wanted to talk about was... Um, 2 Corinthians 10 5 just to piggyback off what you were saying you're talking about how people are consumed with what they're going on like there's a selfish spirit going on in the land because everybody is saying there's a famine in the land I have to conserve so everybody just I'm good babe I can, I can talk over it there's like a famine in the land everybody's just being consumed with what they're going through and whatever's playing in their mind but the scripture in um, 2 Corinthians 10 5 says casting down imagination and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to obedience of Christ a lot of us the enemy have stepped and infiltrated your mind and you're so consumed with whatever you got going on where to the point you're not able to show that person that need, need love. Maybe God is leading you to talk to somebody or God is leading you to spread that love. But unfortunately, because you're so consumed with what you have going on, you're missing God. Okay. So this scripture tells us to cast down every vain imagination every vain imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? The knowledge of God is everything that God has spoken concerning you, who you are in him, what he has called you to be, the strength that he has poured inside of you. The enemy tries to, the enemy is the father of lies. So he tried to speak lies into your hearing and you're entertaining this imagination and because you're entertaining it, it's causing you not to be effective in the kingdom of God. It's causing you not to be effective to those that you're called to, to those God is calling you to maybe speak a now word or, or have a ready word in your mouth for those that may come to your presence will hear what the Lord is saying. So the enemy has a lot of us in this whirlwind, amen, we're so stuck on yesterday, we're not able to see what God is calling us to do on today. The enemy has entrapped a lot of us, again, with vain imagination, but at, at the same token, the Bible says he has given us power to put every vain imagination into captivity under subjected of who Jesus Christ is. The Bible says, let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. So that means everything that God has spoken concerning my life, I have to let that be a part of my mental thought process, right? So if an imagination that comes in my mind that goes against the word of God, I have authority to pull that thing down, meaning, uh-uh, this is not of God. I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus, where you begin to say, Satan, I see you and I see your tactics because the enemy will try to pour seeds in your mind. And because if we're not, the Bible says be cunning as a snake. If we're not cunning enough and wise enough, we start to feed into these vain imagination that come into your mind. Or maybe somebody said something that you didn't like. Or maybe somebody said something about you that you didn't agree with. But all of a sudden it was small, but it became big because we didn't put these thoughts into captivity. So this can be, this is one of the reasons why we're not walking into the full measure of who God called us to be or why we can't minister to other people or have a ready word is because we're so consumed with what's going on, with, with what is going on in our own mind. My tongue is getting tired for some reason, but with what is going on with our own mind. Go ahead, baby. I'm done. <laughs> Uh, no, what she said is very powerful. And I'm, I'm one of those people. I was taught, I come from like old school Pentecostal church and, and a lot of things that we were taught, unfortunately, was not well thought out and it, it was not good you know, in retrospect, and there was just some things, and one of the things they used to always say, oh, it don't matter what's going on with you, you show concern for somebody else, ignore what you're going through, and just do the will of God, well, that's not the best advice, because you can't ignore what you're going through just to do the will of God, and actually, his word never requires us to do that, in fact, I suggest to you, people of God, this is why we need, especially during this time, for a lot of us, we have a lot of time to spend alone, you know, we have time, a lot of downtime, a lot of chill time that so many people have been praying for. And last week, I even said a lot of stuff we pray for and hope for, we are getting it now. It didn't come in the way we wanted to get it. But now we're complaining that we, we have what we've been asking for. We ask God for downtime. We want to chill. We want to be able to think. And so we should be using this as opportunity to self-examine 
and find out what are those hurt areas? What are those areas of pain? What are those areas of sorrow? The areas, the undealt with trauma, you know, the suppressed issues that you've, uh, that you've tried to work past, that you try to, uh, use eating disorders that develop, you know, you try to soothe that pain and that stuff like with alcohol and mm -hmm. prescription medications and things like that. And back to the first point I made, everybody don't go to alcohol and drugs and food. Mm -hmm. Some people try to work and they use the, and I'm about to, I'm about to blow y'all away with this. Some folks use the kingdom of God to ignore their own issues. They try to go to every church service. They try to feed every homeless and go to every uh, evangelism session because they're running from their selves. So make sure you're not using the kingdom of God and the works that he's calling us to do, you know, as a crutch to ignore what it is that you know you need to be dealing with. So the challenge is like my wife was saying, listen, if you are so consumed with what you're going through and dealing with, you can't fill out. You can't discern and see what's going on with other people that you may be able to step in and save a life. And I'm not saying you need to ignore what you're going through. Yeah. Face what you're going through. Deal with what you're going through in a timely manner so that, you're com that you can better be in position to help somebody and serve somebody. Mm -hmm. Use this downtime. Like I said, that pain, that trauma, that sorrow, and even the, the wicked ways, the sinful ways, the ways of iniquity that we have allowed to engrass our hearts. Mm -hmm. we, we have time to deal with this stuff. We can't keep using the God knows my heart or ain't nobody perfect as an excuse to remain the way we are. That's true. And, I, and check this out. God loves us regardless. Okay. God loves us regardless in whatever hurt condition, broken condition, sinful condition, wicked condition. But does that mean you stay hurt broken? Does that mean you stay wicked and full of iniquity just because God loves you? I suggest people of God, and I'm not preaching to you anything that I don't tell myself and in my meditation and my prayer time. Because every day I got my journal and I'm asking God not to just reveal the spiritual woes and the spiritual misses. I'm asking him to reveal what's going on mentally with me that's off, emotionally with me that's off, any mm -hmm. sinful, any wicked ways, any habits, any desires. I'm holistic when I come to God because I want him to reveal everything because understand something. You can't defeat what you refuse to face. And the whole, the, the subject that I'm going to get back to, but I have to take this route, is showing concern, walking in love, showing concern for your fellow brother and sister. Not literally, but those that you don't even know as well. So I'm telling you, I'm encouraging you, face your issues. Whatever it is that you've been running away from, whatever scars that you thought time, and check this out, time don't cure or heal all wounds. It don't actually cure or heal any wounds. Because 20 years can go by if you haven't faced that issue that you're dealing with, what, the, what your mama and your daddy or some stranger or your co-worker said to you or what happened when you was a, a young adult. 20 years can pass and you'll still be living that out. That's right. And we think because time has gone on that a lot of us, like I'm 36 for instance, if something happened when I was five and I didn't deal with that or take the proper steps to move towards the path of healing and wholeness, I'm 36 still hearing the same voices of people that told me I'm not going to be nothing or you're not strong enough or you're small enough or you're going to be just like your daddy. You're going to be just like your mama or you may have been molested. You may have been raped. You may have saw uh, traumatic situations in front of your eyes, your parents or mama, somebody getting beat or somebody getting shot or stabbed or things like that. Guess what? Time doesn't do anything for you if you're not doing the right things with the time. So the whole point I'm trying to make behind this people of God is ask God to search us because a lot of times we won't be honest with ourselves. We like to think our stuff don't stink. And we like to also think that because time goes on that we've defeated or conquered our enemies that's inside. That's right. But people of God, you got to ask the Holy Spirit to search you. Search out those areas. Psalms 139, 23, and 24. It says, search me and know my ways. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me into the path of everlasting life. We scared to pray that. That's true. Because we're scared of what we're going to find. But I was told a long time ago that God gives us chances behind closed doors to deal with the issues, to take the steps we need to take. 
towards the path of deliverance, healing, and wholeness. Mm -hmm. And when you don't deal with your issues, when you need to deal with them in a timely manner, mm -hmm. guess what? They will deal with you. And unfortunately, a lot of our issues may pop out in public. In the public eye where you be embarrassed and things. I have to tell you this because I'm, just, I'm trying to encourage you people of God. God is merciful and long suffering. But if God is calling you to do something, which in this case is introspect. To let him point out them areas that need healing. That need wholeness. That need deliverance. That need to grow. That need to mature. And you refuse to. You remove yourself out of his will. His love don't change. But when you remove yourself out of the will of God, his love don't change, but you have removed yourself from his protection. So people of God, come out of your shell. Come out of your shell. Come out of your selfish ways. Come out of your, it's only about me, myself, and I ways. There are people that are dependent on you coming out of what you're going through so that you can help them come out of what they're going through. Some people, believe it or not, don't want to be healed and whole, babe. You know why? Because it keeps them with an audience mm -hmm. that they wouldn't normally have. And guess what? Some of us, because we've been dealing with certain issues so long, we form our world, our life, our relationships, our thought process, thinking patterns, and mindset around this dysfunction that we've been living in. And the mere fact of being delivered, healed, and made whole, it scares us. Why? Because if you built everything around dysfunction and now God allows deliverance, healing and wholeness to come your way, that scares people because now you have to recreate your life. Please don't be one of those people taking comfort in your pain, mm -hmm. taking comfort in your sorrow, taking comfort in your sin, taking comfort in your iniquity, your wayward ways, your black heart. The, tra the trauma you have suppressed over years. Don't be okay with that. Because no matter how much, and I'm going to speak this, and I'm going to say this like I always say, be encouraged, but it doesn't matter how much of a support system you have. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the desire to be healed, whole, set free, and guess what? I'm, on, I'm in a mental health field too. Psychologists, therapists, counselors, grief counselors, they are all tell you the same thing. You got to have a desire somewhere inside of you to be healed, whole, and set free. Mm -hmm. Because you can go to therapy, counseling, and if it's something in you that don't have fight, it's going to be in vain with you even going there. The same thing with God. God doesn't override our will. You hear that? God loves us, but he don't override our will. That's the purpose of him giving us what? Free will. Mm -hmm. So even when you come to God... You something in you got to say, God, I want to be whole. I want to be restored. I want to be mended. I'm tired of hurt. I'm tired of pain. I'm tired of the, making the same bad decisions and choices. I'm tired of living out my past. You got to come with that attitude saying, I'm going to by any means necessary, like Malcolm X will say, I'm going to get past this. But if that's not your heart and your heart is, well, it happened to me, you know, I'm, I ain't nothing like they said because they told me I wasn't going to be nothing and I ain't going to mount to nothing. If that's your attitude, you're going to always be there. And you can't say just because, because I, did, I taught a Bible study, I'm going to let my wife come in, but I had to make this point. I taught a Bible study and somebody mentioned and said, well, what if all you heard was you ain't going to be nothing, you, you ain't this, you ain't that, uh, you're just like your mom. What if that's all you heard? I said, guess what? God never leaves us hanging. So even if the people that, it, that was in your life, you know, in your family spoke those things to you, God always sent somebody to speak something different to us. Right. God will never leave you hanging. So that's no excuse that your mama, your daddy and folks told you that you weren't going to be nothing. Or maybe it was your aunt or maybe it was a teacher in school. Somewhere along the line, God sent other people to speak something different. Now, what you choose to hold on is your choice. I'm speaking spiritually and think that they will tell you why you're at the therapist's office. Because sometimes it does help to talk it out. But some people talk it out and it's like they never move. You have to, when you're talking it out, because I'm a firm believer, you shouldn't internalize anything. And God don't just mysteriously poof our pain and sorrow away. You hear me, people of God? God ain't just going to, you going to pray and he going to poof your issues away. Some stuff requires our effort. That's 
That's right. And truth be told, a lot of us, the reason why we haven't moved out of this broken and hurt place that many of us or sinful place that we're in is because we want to just pray and have God to just go like, poof, you healed, you hold, you delivered, you set free. That's not always how God works. God reveals strategies and things we ought to do, instructions that we have to follow in order to get the desired result. So if you're looking for God to just poof, touch your head and all is well, uh, you're going to be waiting a long time. Because a lot of this depends on us and what we do. Come on now, Yvonne. My present situation will never be my final destination. Go ahead, babe. Um, I'm just to piggyback off what you're saying when you're talking about the different things that we go through when we don't deal with it. And, I, and I'm going to just be transparent with you guys. Um, in 2018, uh, I almost kind of like had a nervous breakdown, right? Um, all this emotional things just started fluttering up, fluttering up. Cause in 2018, when I met my husband, you know, everything was good. But as soon as we got engaged, it's like a monster, praise the Lord that was on the inside of me, just awoke. As soon as the engagement ring came on my finger and a lot of times the enemy will keep you going because he said earlier, you know, a lot of us get involved in a whole bunch of church rhetoric and we're just going from one place to the next because we don't want to deal with what, the, what is going on internally. And um, a lot of us has busied our lives so much. Yes. We've consumed our lives with activities where we never really had a chance to sit there and deal with certain traumas and situations that may have come about from a childhood, from a teenagehood to your adulthood, we didn't have the we didn't have the time to really deal with it or process the pain, right? So as soon as the engagement ring came on my finger, it's as if the demon that was lying suppressed awoke. Like now I'm about to um I'm gonna I'm about to wreak havoc in your life, okay? Because I I failed to deal with certain emotional traumas, and when I tell you, in 2018, the last four months of that year, when I mean it was like hell on earth to me because I didn't deal with these emotional traumas, yeah. you know, cause sometimes when you're in church, a lot of times people don't believe in going to therapists or you just, you know, you think you can pray and fast it away. You know, you can fast 20 days and it's going to poof, be gone. But at the same time, there is an anointing for therapists. There's an anointing that God has released on people who have the ability to counsel souls into healing. And some of us are not tapping into that resource. And God had yep. to lead me and say, you need to go to therapy. I'm yep. like, okay, my pastors prayed for me and say, you are healed. You are whole. You will flourish and all this extra stuff and all this extra word and prayer saying you are whole. You're going to flourish, but nothing was breaking because there, there, there's a specific a point in a believer life where you're going to have to face the music and what I mean by facing the music you're gonna to have to face yourself you're gonna to have to face what you're dealing with because I went through a lot of stuff growing up I don't have time to get into all that but I went through a lot of different traumas that I didn't process properly and I kept myself busy in church going to church seven days a week participating in every program that I can participate but the minute God slowed me down Guess what? I had no choice but to deal with Mandy. All these traumas that you went through, you had to deal with it. And I had to deal with it and process it. But it's when, again, like I said, when I got engaged and all this stuff just started coming up, I had to go back in time. Mm -hmm. I had to revisit all these traumas. And I'm still going to therapy, okay? Praise the Lord if I'm being transparent. I'm still going to therapy. I'm still unraveling from certain things that happened to me as a child. Molestation that happened to me as a, as a child, amen? Because sometimes women, we go through different things, especially when it comes to molestation and you being violated at a premature age. It makes you have trust issues. You don't trust very well because you've been violated, amen? So there's just certain things that... Going to therapy will help you unravel. Mm -hmm. Seeking counsel will help you unravel. Mm -hmm. Not just being laying up the hands is good. Praying for you is good. They can cast out demons to the tenth power is good. But there is an anointing that God has released on therapists mm -hmm. to help you unravel from the soul. We got the spirit part down pat because the pastors, the apostles, they can lay hands and get your spirit oh, right when it good. comes to mm -hmm. your soul. Mind your that's where you got to go further. It, it go past 
the church. Then you got therapies, therapists that God has anointed with the spirit of counsel to help you get through and arrival from certain things that you are going to going through. And the scripture of Matthew eleven twenty eight says, "Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest." Okay. Sometimes we have to just shut everything down. Just shut it down and go into God. There's a place in God where you can find rest for your soul because the enemy has released a spirit, when I mean of turmoil, anguish, and people just going through in their mind. And it's really not that serious, but he has magnified his thing. But the only place where you'll be able to find rest is in God's presence. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling burdensome, you're feeling heavy, you feel like you, you're about to blow up, you need to get into God's presence mm -hmm. to release that. Mm -hmm. There's an exchange that takes place when you get into God's presence. That's all I have to say. And I'm going to tell you something. My wife touched on this, and I'm glad she touched on this. We use the things of God as a drug. So we don't face us. And I said that again, and I just wanted to get back on there. People of God, we have to... If you broke your arm right now, you may pray, but I, I guarantee you, you're going to the ER, right? Uh, if something start going malfunctioning with your urinary tract system or your your uh, kidneys and things like that, you're going to pray, but you're going to make your way to a clinic or a doctor's office. So why, when things start going wrong with your mind and your emotion, we think you can just fast and pray and all is going to be well? This goes back to faulty teaching that we were taught. Here's the thing, and I'm going to mess up some of y'all theology. God don't always move supernaturally. That's true. God don't always move supernaturally. God a lot of times moves through your obedience to the instructions that he's given you. So what if perhaps you've been distressed, you've been depressed, mm -hmm. anxious, full of anxiety and every other mental health disorder? And you're fasting and praying for 40 days, 40 nights, and nothing is happening. Could it be that you're looking for God to do something supernaturally when he's probably telling you in a small, still voice that, hey, you need to go to therapy. You need to go see a grief counselor or a mental health counselor. But you're not listening for those instructions. And therefore, if you're not listening and hearing those instructions, you can't follow those instructions. And then you're going to continue to pray and fast in vain. True. Guess what, people of God? There are Christians. If you're a Christian, because there are other people that tune in sometimes that are not a Christian, but we're dealing with Christians. If you're a Christian, they have Christian therapists. Stop feeling your pastor has it all. That's just like you going to your primary care doctor and you got end stage renal disease. Ain't nothing your primary care doctor can do for you. You need to see a nephrologist. Yeah. Or that's just like you having a uh, coronary artery disease or, you know, congestive heart failure, but you want to go and have your primary care doctor treat you. Listen, and I'm going to say this as a leader and a pastor. Your pastor don't have everything you need. That's true. Your leader, your apostle, your bishop don't have everything you need. When you, when, when you want to live a holistic life, a holistically healthy life, you need to add the other components that God brings so that we can live this whole and this healed, healthy and whole life. Because like my wife said, if you're just looking for, you go to church, oh, pastor, pray for me. And they put some oil on your head and, and, and speak in tongues and I cast out. Everything we're dealing with ain't a demon. Why do you think a lot of times laying hands ain't working? Because you're not dealing with the spirit. You're, you're dealing with the human side. Yeah. You're dealing with human hurt, human pain. Mm -hmm. When you don't deal with this stuff in a timely manner, then you become prime bait for the enemy and all types of demonic forces. Yeah. But stop thinking every time something is going on with your emotions or your mental status that it's a demon. It is not a demon. <laughs> You give place and residence to the demon when you don't deal with this stuff. Stop letting folks keep you in a broken place by telling you, ah, oh, just pray and trust God, everything will work out. Yes, it will, but at the same time, God is a God of, that gives instructions, directives, and things we ought to do. For instance, and if you don't think I'm telling the truth, what happened when Joseph was asleep, right? And that angel came to visit Joseph and, mm -hmm. and said, hey, you need to get your wife and you need to get baby Jesus and get up out of here because they're coming to kill him. And they're going to they're gonna probably kill her. So, you know what some of us would have done? We would have said, you know what? That's the, uh-uh. I trust God. He going to protect me right where I'm at. 
I don't have to go nowhere. I'm going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm going to stay strong in God. And you know God is telling you, giving you instructions. That's true. Stop letting your religion interfere with your relationship and your ability to hear God. You see what I'm saying? If God is telling you to go see a therapist, to go to a peer family support group, things are going on to reach out to somebody. Stop being prideful. Because that is way, God's way of helping you and intervening in your situation. When you obey. So whatever it is you're dealing with, yes, God is the final solution on everything. Mm -hmm. But you have to be willing to go with the solution he gives you. That's true. Because again, we just have this thing in my heart with House of Love is to see the people healed, healthy, and whole. But I come to tell you, God ain't going to always do that with just the poof. And I'm using that as an illustration because we think God is just going to touch us every time we open our mouth. And he will touch you. But a lot of times it's going to come through the form of you being obedient to them instructions that he's giving you. Amen. So I ask you, what has God told you to do? You're looking for God to move in supernatural ways, but he's telling you, you'll see me move when you step out and do what I told you to do. Yeah. You want to be healed. You want to be whole. You want to be set free. Contact that therapist. You, you, I believe in bridging the gap. You continue your prayer and fasting, but you also go and do what's wise at the same time. Healthy habits. And to be honest with you, and I'm going to get back, and I know we're talking about being there for other people, but you can't be there for somebody if you don't adequately deal with what's going on inside of you. Because truth be told, a lot of us remain scarred and wounded. And guess what happens? We bleed on the people that we try to help. Stop letting your blood fall on everybody that you're trying to help because you're refusing to deal with what's going on internally. That's true. Don't ignore what's going on internally. Deal with your issues inside so you can stop bleeding on people. Because it does happen. People of God, we're going back to 1 John 4, 7 when it says, Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that love is born of God and know of God. The mark of a committed Christian is a commitment to walk in love. There is no room for selfish Christians, self-centered Christians, mm -hmm. because that conflicts with love. Because if you're not operating out of love, nothing else you do for God or in the name of God matters or counts. So people, the other side of that is love yourself enough to do what you need to do to go towards deliverance, healing and wholeness. Yeah. And if you remember what I said last week, the difference between healing and wholeness, as God revealed it to me, when he heals you of a condition, mental, emotional or physical, he stops that condition from going into your future. Mm -hmm. But that condition has done some damage from that point and before. So now you need wholeness to step in where God is not only going to stop that condition and get you healed of that to stop it from infecting your future. But now you need him to backtrack and to make whole those scarred and those hurt and those pain areas that have already been messed up. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean about healing and wholeness. People of God, I love you. Be encouraged today. Uh, continue to deal with yourself while we're going through these quarantine. Use, maximize your time. Amen. Stop running from yourself. Amen. And I told you this last week, if y'all tuned in, don't be surprised who God may cut off from your life during this whole thing. And don't be going to look for them when the quarantine is over to hang out. God is releasing some folks from your life because they're the hold up to why you can't go and move towards the path of healing and wholeness. Yes, people are often our anchors in a wrong way. When God is trying to get us to move forward, they're the ones that's holding us back. But we can't blame them because we the ones refuse to let go of them. So sometimes God got to step in and just make the disconnection. Amen. You feel what I'm saying? Any, so we love you all, people of God. Be encouraged. Deal with your issues. And once you deal with your issues, like Jesus told Peter, he said, after thou art converted, go back and strengthen your brother. Baby, give him some final let words. Let me um, say this and... This is um, a couple of um, strategies my husband's given me over time and my mentor has given me over time. Um, go back, get a journal, and just, if whatever you can remember, just write out every trauma that you have dealt with in your life until you can get a hold of, of a grief counselor, until you can get a hold of, of somebody who's in therapy. 
you can start the process with yourself even mm -hmm. at home. Yep. Get a folder, go back as much as you can remember and write down everything that you have gone through in your life, mm -hmm. things people have told you, whether it's through loved ones, friends, family, different situations that may have occurred. Ask God to bring back to remembrance everything that you had to deal with growing up as a child, mm -hmm. okay? So when you write these things down, as you begin to write it down, you get you begin to write down how it made you feel. And after you write down and verbalize how it made you feel, mm -hmm. now that you have processed the feeling of it, now you begin to ask God, Father God, I ask you to heal me of every word Every word that was spoken over my life that you never intended me to hear. Amen. Because unfortunately, sometimes the enemy will use those that are close to you. Those that you deem that have influence in your life. Those that you love to be the same person to turn back around and bite you and prick you. But at the same time, God has given us power. Mm -hmm. and authority to usurp any word that was spoken in our minds. Mm -hmm. So we can go back in time and say, you know what? I'm not a failure. Yes, my mother may have said I will never amount to nothing, but the word of God said that I will prosper. The word of God says that he has plans for me, a hope and a future. My future is secure in God. So everything that may have been spoken to you, every ill spoken word that goes against the word of God, that goes against the very nature of of God, you can recant it and you can begin to say, I am not what they say that I am. And after you recant and reverse every ill spoken word that was spoken concerning your life, you can begin the healing process and say, God, I forgive so and so. God, I let go so and so. God, everything that so and so did, I forgive through faith. Mm -hmm. You can start that process and forgive yeah. through faith. Until you can get in contact with a therapist, you write down all your traumas and you verbalize how it made you feel. And even if you didn't get a chance to express yourself to that person, express yourself in a notebook and say, this is how you made me feel. This is what you said to me. After you've done that, now you go research scriptures that go against these ill spoken words. This is what the Lord says concerning my life. This is what God is saying concerning my life. Okay. After you speak those things. Okay. And you accept what God has said concerning your life. Guess what happens? You begin to unravel from certain words that was spoken concerning you. You begin to unravel from certain ill-spoken words that the enemy may have implanted in your spirit to liberate yourself from these things. Because every now and then, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be quiet because my husband's is me. Every now and then. No, I was saying you look at oh, my people. Because every now and then, the enemy will come back and say, oh, well, you ain't nothing. Or remember what that guy said to you. Or you, you ain't. <laughs> I can go back in time. I remember a guy I was talking to at the time. He said, you're not the ideal woman. A man, <laughs> a guy that I like told me that. So guess what? When me and my husband was courted, oh, I put him through hell. I did. If I can be transparent with you guys, I, it's the mm -hmm. God in him. And because he's a prophet, he was able to see past certain craziness. He didn't say, you know what, give my ring back. Hell no, give me my ring back. Praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. But I think the thing about it is when God get ready to break certain cycles in your life, when God get ready to dismantle certain curses in your life, you can see that based on the people that he brings into your life. I thank God for his mom. I thank God for him. They are pillars, a voice of reason. When I felt like I was about to go off the edge. Amen. God will utilize those that he has called to your life yeah, to pull yeah. you back in. Amen. To show you, hey, you about to run into a brick wall the direction you're going to. You're about to run into a brick wall. You need to come back. You're, you're, you're going too far. Come back in. Come back in. Like, what is going on? I've been challenged. Like, something is not right. Like, something is going on in the, up here. Like, you need to deal with this thing. This is not of God. Like, how are you so powerful one day and then the next you're, you're, you're going down the slope, you're crashing the next. I mean, how are you so powerful? You're a powerful prayer warrior. You're a worshiper, but yet you got these things, you got these little critters that you're not dealing with that's going on in your <laughs> mind. As much oh, as people done laid hands oh, and said, you're this, you're this and that person, or you're, you're a mighty person in God, but yet these words that people spoken to you, you're not able to unravel it. And because... It's not that you're not able to unravel. You you failed to deal with it. Or you didn't have the right source to deal with it. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. I, be, I was going to the altar every week. Like, Lord, you got to do something. Something is not right. 
what is going on here? This is not you. Like, what is going on? Like, it just, like, Pandora box just open. Like, what in the world? Sometimes, or many times, when God get ready to deliver you, he will send a deliverer in your midst and Pandora box will open. But that is for you to deal with these issues that has been hidden, that the enemy yep. has caused to lie dormant. And when something good gets ready to arrive, that's when the enemy wants to rise his ugly head. That's when the enemy wants to can come in to try to cause you to dismantle and pull down the blessings that God has placed in your life. The Bible talks about how a, a wise woman, she buildeth her house and the foolish one tears it down. If you're not wise enough, if you don't, if you're not conscious to see what's going on, the same, the same blessing that God is building, you'll tear it down with your own hand because you're failing. You mm -hmm. didn't deal with what you were going through. Mm -hmm. You didn't um, say, you know what? I'm going to deal with this head on. This trauma yeah. head on. This, this, these things that mm -hmm. people have done to me throughout the years. I'm going to deal with this head on because it's not fair to the people that God has called into your life to be a blessing to you for them to pay for for what somebody else done to you. That's not fair. That's not right. That is not of God. Why should they deal with your crap? You have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Go to therapy. Like I said before, I'm still in therapy. Yeah, I am. Yeah. As much as I'm praying and and I'm powerful. Yeah, I'm writing therapy at the same time. Amen. The, because guess what? The abundant I'm, life. I'm, I, I'm after a holistic life. Mm -hmm. The abundant life. Because Jesus said, I promise you an abundant life. How do you get abundant life? God puts certain mechanisms. He puts certain um, things in place for you to gain an advantage over the enemy. Because a lot of us are not entering into the things that God has called us to enter in. Because mm -hmm. the enemy has a hold on you. And he is using your past to keep a hold on you. He's using your past. Amen. The, the, your past is that strong man. Your past is that stronghold in your mind. That you can't forgive. Or when somebody wronged you, you, you just can't let it go. It is a stronghold mm -hmm. that the enemy is utilizing to keep you in your past. You're trying to move mm -hmm. forward, but you can't move forward. You're trying to let it go and forgive, but it just seems like it is not going away. It is a stronghold. Yes, we have to pray. Yes, we have to fast. And yes, God has given us the keys to the kingdom to bind and to loose. Yes, use all of those and, and use therapy. therapy at the same time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Therapy is good. So we encourage you all, listen, uh, Journal and Saves Lives is my mental health advocacy organization. If you need help getting in contact, no matter what city, state you live in, with a therapist or a counselor and things like that, reach out to us via email, journalingsaveslives at yahoo.com. Journaling saves lives at yahoo.com. If you're needing any mental health resources and things uh, that could, you know, assist you in your own direct situation or a situation that someone close to you or someone that you know is dealing with, reach out to us. We can provide you with the resources and get you into the hands of somebody that's going to be able to walk you through that next level of healing and wholeness. Amen. Amen. And uh, we're done, people of God. We love you so much. Listen. Uh, we do a whole lot in outreach, and I'm not a money preacher, but it takes money to do ministry, all right? So we, I think this month already, as of April 25th, we have fed 90 and gave hygiene products to 90 homeless people. Now, we're a very small ministry. We got this many of us, okay? <laughs> this many. But we were able to feed and give hygiene products to 90 uh, people that fell into homeless condition because I don't like to call them homeless people because yes. I don't want nobody calling me homeless, homeless when I was homeless because yes. yes I've been there too yes. uh, just in 2017 mm -hmm. sleeping in cars and hotel rooms okay so yes I've been there so people that have fallen into a homeless condition we need your help yes. uh, if you look in the caption of the video uh, you can sew into us via PayPal and that's house of love fl at yahoo.com and you can sow into us via Cash App, House of Love FL, dollar sign, House of Love FL, Cash App, whatever you want to sow, it is not going into my pocket. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? We we doing works with this. We're going to continue to feed the citizens that have fallen into a homeless condition, give them hygiene products to clean their bodies and fill their stomachs. And we have prayer and do all that with them. So please consider partnering with us. Yeah. And it is tax deductible. We're a legit church organization 501c3 and we have been for like since the beginning of this year so uh we thank you in advance have a wonderful sunday 
Uh, we will be going live with our regular service. I got a word that's going to bless the people of God on today. Uh, so tune in about uh, 1145, 12 noon to my page or Mandy's page. Uh, and may the God of peace be with you all. Blessings to you all. Father, we just ask right now, God, that you release the spirit of peace, God, the spirit of healing and wholeness on your people, God. Everyone, God, that has tuned into this live, everyone that's going to come back and watch this live and to listen and to absorb the teaching that you've given us, God. Father, may they walk down the path of healing and wholeness in a timely manner. We rebuke the enemy of their soul that comes to deceive, to make them feel all is well when it's not really well. But Father, we ask God that you show them them God show them the real them God the things that they suppressed and hidden God so that you can bring healing and holiness and God help them to be obedient to whatever instructions and directions that you give them and father we just speak that this shall be a peaceful day in Jesus name we do pray amen be encouraged people of God we love you all have a wonderful day remember so cash out house of love Florida okay thank, thank you, you. <laughs> bye bye bye